Okay, so how do you solve an equation like this? Well, of course, I'm going to answer this specifically step by step in just one second. But in algebra, to solve any sort of equation, you have to first kind of identify what type of equation you're dealing with. So when looking at this equation, this part of the equation here is kind of giving us a clue. We're dealing with something with this symbol. So what type of equation is this? Well, you can see that I have the answer uh, to that question uh, in the title. This is a radical equation. Now, if you said, well, isn't this a square root equation? Well, yes, you would be correct, but uh, what's better, a better description when you see this symbol in algebra, just call this a radical, okay? Now, of course, if you're trying to find the square root of nine, for example, that is the square root, but we could change this problem and make it into like the cube root, okay? So that's why you don't want to say this is a square root equation. You want to get more uh, specific, you know, algebraically, if you will. Just call this a radical equation. And that's important, too, because let's say you're trying to go through your notes or your textbook or you, um, you're you trying to ask someone for help. You're saying, oh, yeah, I'm trying to solve an equation with these thingamajiggies or square roots, but you may have a cube root, okay? So again, radical equation. It is important to know the kind of the technical name of these things. But anyways, if you think you could solve this radical equation, go ahead and pause the video and put your answer into the comment section. And uh, there's a part of this problem that's really, really important as well. So even though you might put in the right answer into the comment section, you may have for, uh, forgotten uh, to do an extremely important step. And I'm actually going to show you the answer here in a second. So you can kind of check your work. But uh, before we do all that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you, all of you out there, can be successful in math, especially those that are struggling. But what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time. If you're preparing for a test with the math section, all of you out there, not maybe not all of you, but most of you probably are going to be taking a test like this. You don't even realize it. A placement test, an entrance exam, a certification exam. So things like the ASVAB, GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have great homeschool math courses. And hopefully you have great math notes. Okay, If you don't, you need to start working on this immediately, but I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that helps me out as well. Okay, so let's get into how to solve this basic radical equation. And as promised, I'm going to show you the answer. Okay, so here is the answer. R is equal to 324. Okay, this is the answer. Feel free to use a calculator, uh, by the way, to solve this. But, of course, what you want to do is show all your work and have all the proper steps um, kind of written down. Because you could, It's um, this is entirely possible, let's suppose this was a test question, okay? And if you were in my math class or a lot of other um, people who teach math, if you gave your answer and you gave this answer, but you failed to do an important part of um the work here, even though you may have the correct answer, you may not get full credit. You might get like eight out of 10. So some of you might be very angry about that. You might be saying, what are you talking about? I got the right answer. What could you possibly be talking about? Well, I'm gonna explain this here now. Okay, so let's get into this. So just a real general kind of outline when you're solving radical equations, this is the a real, real general outline of what you need to do. So the kind of the main goal is to isolate the radical. And what I mean is here we have square roots here. We need to do a bunch of steps. So we get one square root expression on one side of the equation and typically a number on the other side. Okay, so you want to isolate the radical. So that's what you're, you're thinking to do. The second thing is, in order to clear this radical here, okay, we're going to have to take the power of each side of the radical. In other words, here we're talking about square roots, so eventually we're going to want to take the square of both sides. And then, lastly, most of you out there um, may think that this is an optional step, but it's not. You must check for extraneous solutions. Anytime you take the square or take um, both sides of, a, uh, of an equation in algebra, 
and where there's a variable involved, you can introduce something called an extraneous solution. Okay, so your answer, okay, when you're working your answer out, you could get the correct answer, but that's um, you have to verify it because oftentimes your answer, when you go to plug it back in into the original equation, will not work. Okay, so these things definitely come up. They're called extraneous uh, solutions. So you got to be very careful about this. This is one of the key, key things you have to keep in mind when you're dealing with radical equations. So we're going to uh, uh, go through this step. So again, if you got the right answer to this problem but failed to do this part of it, you would end up, unfortunately, with not full credit for your work. Okay. All right, so let's get into this now. But before I show you the work, I just basically told you what to do. So you should say, all right, now I get what you're saying. Go ahead and pause the video and do the work yourself. See if you can do this on your own without my help. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the solution. So first uh, first things first, I'm seeing, okay, we have some fractions here. We have three, we have two, and then this three. Anytime you don't see a denominator, there is a denominator. You can just put that over one. So the best uh, thing to do when there's an equation with a bunch of fractions is to clear the fractions. Nobody really likes to deal with fractions. So let's go ahead and clear the fractions. What's the easiest way to clear the fractions? Well, uh, the easiest way to uh, clear uh, fractions in an equation is to multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator. So here we have 3, 1, and 2. The LCD, of course, is 6. So when I multiply each uh, term, of the equation by six, this is what we get. Okay, so six times two thirds r, so three goes into six, two, two times two is four, so this becomes four r. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this again. Uh, all right, so we're using the distributive property, by the way. This is going to be six times this, six times that, and six times this. So six times this negative three gives us a negative 18, and then six times this r um, over two. How do we do that? Well, 2 goes into 6, uh, 3. 3 times r is 3r. Okay, now, if you're confused about, you know, the LCD or how it went from here to here, well, that's probably a good indication that you need to review some basic um, things about fractions and the distributive property, okay? So we're talking like pre-algebra, algebra stuff. Of course, I would uh, steer you towards those courses, uh, really more so the algebra, my Algebra 1 course for radical equations, okay? So if you need extra help with any of this stuff, that's where I would suggest you go. All right, so now we have uh, an equation, okay? This equation is equivalent to our original equation. It's just written differently, and uh, it's, you know, easier to deal with because we don't have any fractions. So now let's go ahead and work on this uh, equation here. Okay, so we have 4 times the square root of r minus 18 is equal to 3 square root r. So what's our objective? Remember, we want to get all the square roots on one side of the equation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract this 3r, okay? I'm going to subtract uh, 3r from both sides of the equation, okay? Think of this square root of r. Think of an, an equation like this, 4x minus 18 is equal to 3x, okay? Same concept. So this is just like a variable Okay, and it's the same variable. So these are effectively like like terms. Okay, so here you subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. Same deal here. So we have 4r minus 3r. So I'll just leave that like this. And we're, of course, you're adding down. So negative 18 plus 0 is just negative 18. And 3 uh, square root r, not 3r. Okay, if I misspoke, please forgive me. So uh, 4 square root of r minus 3 square root of r minus 18. And now these two terms go away. 3 squared r minus uh, 3 squared r is 0. Okay, so uh, what do we do next? Well, we have 4 square root of r minus 3 squared of r. So here you can combine these coefficients. So that's going to give us a positive 1 square root of r. So square root of r, there really is a 1 here. But you don't need to write the 1. It's just implied that there is a positive 1 minus 18 is equal to 0. Okay, so we're almost there. So what's our next step? Well, now we're going to go ahead and move that 18 to the other side of the equation. So we have the nice, simple, lovely equation. Square root of r is equal to 18. So how do we solve this? Well, this is all these steps that we just took uh, really was the whole main step of isolating the radical. Okay, now that we have the radical isolated, 
Now what we need to do to get to the variable is take the power of both sides. Okay, so because this is a square root, we're going to square both sides. So the square root of r squared is r. Okay, so therefore I have what I'm looking for. I'm trying to solve for r. So square root of r squared is r. But if I square the left-hand side, I must square the right-hand side. So 18 squared is 324. Okay, so if you got this, okay, up to this stage, I must give you a nice little happy face. We're going to hold off. Matter of fact, I'll give you a few check marks. Okay, that's very, very good work. But here's the deal, okay? We don't, you know, at this point, um, a lot of you might say, oh, this is the answer. It's This is the solution to this equation here, our original equation, all right? Well, we don't know that. We do not know that, okay? It looks pretty good. It's a candidate, okay, if you will. It's a possible solution, but this could be an extraneous solution. So this is either a real solution or it's an extraneous solution. And believe me when I tell you, when you do enough of these problems, some of your solutions are not going to work in the original equation. So you must, must check. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify that now. Okay, so let's verify and see if R equals 324 is in fact a good solution. So what we need to do is replace this R with 324. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that here. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times the square root of 324 over 3. You can see my work, minus 3. And this is the way I'm showing this work is the way you need to show this work when you do this on a test, quiz, homework, whatever the case is. And by the way, just a little side point here, okay? The way you do your homework, if you do your homework sloppy, that's how you're going to be on quizzes. And that's how you're going to be on test, okay? Um, I'm telling you right now, uh, you want to, uh, your homework is critical, okay? You want to really focus on, just think of your homework problem as test problems, okay? So you get really good at your homework, all this other stuff is going to go smooth. So let's go ahead and continue on. So we have uh, all of this is equal to the square root of R, which is, of course, the square root of 324 over 2. And what we're doing is we want to see if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So 2 times the square root of 324, the square root of 324 is 18. So that's going to be 2 times 18 over 3 minus 3 is equal to the square root of 324, which, of course, is 18. And now let's go ahead and do this arithmetic. So 3 goes into 18, 6. That's 6 times 2. That's 12 minus 3. And then uh, 18... Uh, divided by 2, of course, is 9. All right, so we're going to ask ourselves, is 12 minus 3, which, of course, is 9, is 9 equal to 9? It is. This is a true statement. And because um, this value, 324, when we plugged it in to this equation, it created a true statement at the end. That means it is a valid solution. Okay, so this part here of the problem is not like an optional problem. It's like, yeah, I don't really care. I'm not going to check my work. I know it's right. No, you do not know it is correct. Okay. All right. So hopefully you um, uh, understood all this. Matter of fact, if you did this all right, including the verification, and you didn't need any help, well, let me go ahead and uh, fix up your happy face here. I'm going to give you an A plus plus, 110%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. So that's very, very good. And uh, the, here's the thing, uh, when it comes to algebra, all there's all sorts of different type of um, equations you're going to have to solve. You've got radical equations, you have rational equations, you have systems of equations, quadratic equations, polynomial equations, linear equations. I can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Each one kind of requires its own special procedures and techniques. Okay, that's why it's so critical to take great math notes. Okay. All right, so if any of this is still troubling you, I would strongly suggest you check out my Algebra 1 course. Again, you can find it by following the link in the description of this video. And I do have additional um, YouTube videos on radical equations as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.